Hey gang, welcome back. We're going to do something a little bit different today because I just, pl quite frankly, didn't have time to go detecting. And I had enough people asking me about the stuff that's sitting in my garage that you sometimes see in episodes in the vehicle. So I'm going to take you on a quick tour through the whole compound, kind of show you what my other hobby is. Hope you check it out and enjoy. All right, let's start here. This is, uh, before we go into the back building here, which is in there, that's where I keep everything. This is an 85 Chevy Blazer. It's a K5 Blazer. This is an ex-military vehicle. They're called an M1009. It has a 6.2 liter Detroit diesel in it. Uh, kind of a fun vehicle. This is the treasure truck you guys have been seeing every so often. So that's the story with that one. You can see it gets really hot being army green, so I roll the roof up. Over here we have a dress form. This is where I plan to stick, this is just a bunch of stuff, this is where I plan to stick the Stealth Diggers van, which I have kind of hidden away right now, kit. Uh, it's not here, so we'll look at that another time. But that's where that's going to end up. And then inside here is a bunch of other stuff. So I know, you know, some of this stuff you guys have seen, but I'll just take you around. This is kind of like my other hobby. <laughs> one, of, one of a couple other hobbies. But this is the... Uh, Studebaker Weasel, 1944 M29C Amphibious Personnel Carrier. Uh, it has USMC numbering on it, so I'm assuming that it went over towards the Japanese side of the war effort before it came back home. That's where the USMC used these to invade places like Okinawa. Cabrio, this is not mine. Some of these vehicles in here aren't mine. They're other people's. So, yeah, I have a thing for license plates. I've got a lot of them. But uh, this is an 88 Mercedes 560 SL, so it's got a 5.6 liter V8. If you didn't know that about the Mercedes anyway, a lot of the numbers denote what size engine's in it. This one's a little bit more interesting than the Merc. This is a 1979 uh, Pontiac Trans Am 10th Anniversary Edition. It's a Daytona pace car replica, so they're kind of... Uh, they have actual pace cars that were at the race, and then these are dealer-installed stickers that you could buy when the car, when you know these cars first came out. So it is a factory thing, essentially, to have these Daytona stickers on here. This is a 6.6 liter or 400 cubic inch Pontiac V8 engine. It's the last true-blooded Pontiac they built. It's triple silver being a <clears throat> 10th anniversary car, four-speed, uh, they made 1,817 of these, so not many, not many at all. But after this, Pontiac went with Chevy engines, and that was it for Pontiac. I mean, they built cars into the 2000s, but they never really had any muscle car with their own engine anymore. Even the 04 GTOs, they're really an Australian-built car with a Chevy engine. Some of these really need to be cleaned. I need to get them out. And this is why essentially I'm shooting this video to begin with. Is just I've been so strapped for time with the end of the school year and the kids and getting everything done. But this one here is a 1937 Dodge. Has a flathead inline six-cylinder engine with a three-speed on the floor. And what's kind of cool about these cars from this era is they have suicide doors in the back. But this is a really fun car to drive. If I can close the door. Seals are a little stiff, so... The, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of extra effort to close that up. Next to it is a 1970 Cadillac DeVille convertible. This car is just such a cruiser. It has a 472 cubic inch V8 engine. I think that's like well over seven liters. I forget what the conversion is, but it's 18.75 feet long. And she's a bad mamma jamma, let me tell you. These things have like 325 horsepower out of the box, uh, 575 foot-pounds of torque, something like that. Pretty powerful car for uh, something that weighs 4,660 pounds. So that's why the extra power. Next to it, this is a 1947 Hudson Super 6. This also has a flathead inline six-cylinder engine. Kind of a neat car. Uh, this I found out in a barn in Cortland, New York with my father and dragged this thing back home and got it going. Worked on it for a number of years, but it's a very kind of survivor-ish car. It's neat how the hood opens. 
like this. If you haven't seen a flathead engine before, that's what it looks like. All the valves are actually coming up from underneath on the other side. So that's why they call it a flathead. There's really no camshaft or anything like that up there to make it anything other than flat. Really neat car though, has this beautiful kind of deco interior with the dashboard. So something to appreciate for sure. This thing was actually last on the road before I got it going in 1976. So it was restored then. The guy I got it from had a mobile home business and he used to take people's cars in on trade for house payments and that's how he ended up with it. So interesting, I guess. This one here, gosh, this is like the every person that loves Jurassic Park's dream Jeep to find. It's a very clean, original 92 Jeep YJ. It's got the 4.0 liter inline six with a five speed manual trans. And it is with a fun interior an actual Sahara. So this one, I did a ton of work to on the underside. Everything has been repainted. Everything has been cleaned, all new brakes, new exhaust and stuff like that. New wheel or repainted the wheels, did the tires. I really wanted to preserve this because these things are getting impossible to find in the Northeast. The frames are always bad. This one's clean original from down South. So gotta love that. Next to it, this is my tug, AKA it's an 87 Mastercraft Pro Star uh, 190. So these boats are awesome. You know, they're great for pulling tubers. They use a 351 Ford engine. So they're super simple to work on. And uh, I mean, it's in really nice shape, but again, this is why I need to focus on some other things here and give metal detecting a short pause for the week because I need to get things like this in the water. It's June and not early June either. Miata, this is my buddy Justin's pretty sweet turb ski car. This over here, if I can get the, uh, get a good glimpse. This is, I gotta get this thing out too. This is an 83. All original paint, interior, whole nine yards. It's a Mark I GTI from 1983. So I brought this one into school and did some kind of preservation work with the kids on it. I picked this thing up in Vermont for like nothing. It was 1500 bucks. I don't know how you beat that. <clears throat> this thing over here is a, I wanna say it's an 83. I can look at the registration, it's been a while. No, it's an 80. Gosh, I used to own this car. I actually traded this a while back to a friend of mine. Very dusty now. But it's an 83 Porsche 928. Uh, it has a five-speed transmission, which they only built 15% of these cars with manual transmissions at the time because in the 80s, it was thought that manuals would go away and automatics were like a luxury item. So with that in mind, today we kind of look at it the other way, like manuals are desirable, whereas automatics not necessarily so much. Do big old Dodge truck, another vehicle. This little row here of vehicles is not mine. They're here for storage. But like this Dodge, very clean Montana truck, 2,500 with a Cummins, probably worth a good chunk right now, considering truck prices. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the woman wants to sell it. She just can't make up her mind what she wants for it, you know? Old, another Eldorado convertible, a little different. Look at that, Impala SS. Sitting there waiting for some summer driving. This thing is a buddy of mine's, Brian. It's a Hudson Hornet. So it's kind of, uh, needs some restoration work, but you can see it's got a twin carburetor engine. Flathead inline six, pretty neat machine. I used to race these in NASCAR. It used to be a standard car in like 55. We've got a Camaro here. I'm gonna have to talk to this person because it seems their transmission is leaking because there's transmission fluid all over the floor. <clears throat> this thing here is an MGB GT, British car. They're very fun to drive, very fast, or you know, very nimble. Speed is relative, I find, with cars, you know? If something's highly maneuverable, then you really enjoy driving it around. This out back is the Boneyard. You know, there's a Mark IV GTI. This is actually called a 337. So they're a relatively, I wanna say, hard to get car, but this one, unfortunately, the kid's brother, when he was away at college, took it out for a joyride and slid it into a telephone pole, bending the frame. Sad, because they're the high horsepower motor and they're a six speed, which is one of the only cars for the Mark IVs you get that in. 
Over here in the wonderful sunlight, this is another parts vehicle that's here. This is an M880 Dodge truck, another military vehicle. That was a plow truck, kind of saw it sitting. Offered the guy what it's worth in scrap just to have it around in case I ever get one of these things, you know. But I like having this military stuff now. It's kind of become my desire. This is a parts car for the Cadillac that's inside. So this is another 1970 DeVille convertible that's way beyond restoration because of prior accident damage. So it sits here in case I need an extra motor or some trim pieces or whatever. Chevy truck. That does need restoration work. It's actually in pretty decent shape, but it's not mine. This is, uh, we kind of oval track some cars here and byproduct of that. <laughs> no, no one was in this car injured. This is, this is backhoe work. This is something my girlfriend Sarah did. Another big project on my list of things to do someday. This thing is a really cool kind of bow. This is, it took me 10 years to find this. And when I found it, I'm like, I don't really know that I need it anymore. But I bought it because it was cheap. But this is a 24 foot long boat. It's a Lone Star Cruise Master. So they were the largest aluminum boat manufacturing company in the country. They're based out of Plano, Texas. This thing's like 1080 aircraft aluminum, the whole boat. So it never corrodes even without paint. And it's just a beast. It uses an outboard engine. It weighs nothing. This boat is 1,200 pounds with a motor. So you could pull this with just about anything and it's a big cruiser. They're built for the ocean. This thing, this is one of the latest acquisitions that just got dropped off and I'm truly not gonna do anything with this to get it running again. Not right now anyway. I am gonna paint the box and polish up the front paint and kind of use it as an inside display for military stuff. But this is uh, US Navy. So it's actually a military dump truck. It's an International Lodestar 1600 has a gas engine with air brakes, kind of a neat piece. I just couldn't get over the patina of it and I love the smell of old trucks. So we'll paint up the dump box on it and polish the, you know, the blue, get that inside this summer and uh, kind of stick it with the other military vehicles that are hanging around here. I do have a five ton. I'll show you a picture of that right now. I haven't brought it home yet because my buddy Steve is a heavy truck mechanic and uh, Gosh, you know, what better guy to give a couple bucks to to fix something than him? So we're gonna go up to the workshop. This is where I should be spending my nights instead of sitting in school till six o'clock these days. But uh, this is where I work on stuff. So this is the other, this is just a M29 Studebaker Weasel. It's not an M29C. This one is not functioning, whereas the other one is. And this one needs a lot of work. Uh, the tracks are shot. Some of the undercarriage components are in really bad nick. Things like these idle wheels are missing the rubber. This side is missing a leaf spring. So there's some issues here that need to be addressed. It's really torn up on the underside from heavy use, but it could be made to run and function again with some work. The biggest challenge on these are the tracks. So. You can see that there's belting on here. This is actually something someone's done to try and rebuild the tracks, which isn't a bad way to go. Uh, it just needs to have a spring. <laughs> and things like these plates cannot be destroyed like this, the grousers. So peeking around here, we have uh, so the current list of projects. I've got my, uh, I have an on-road, dual sport on-road, off-road dirt bike that I blew a fork seal in. So I need to swap that out pretty quick. His season, once again, is here. Sarah has a dirt bike over there, a CRF 70. She loves cruising around on that, let me tell you. She's a riot. But you know, sometimes it's just the nature. You don't need the best tool, but you do need a tool. <laughs> so we do a lot of work here, me and my friends on our own stuff, kind of use it as a community shop. I just had these two jet skis split in half. The whole top of this, comes off so that you can service these Sea-Doo Sparks. It actually is really handy because it gives you tons of access at stuff. It may sound intimidating to split this thing in half, but once you get all these screws out, it's super simple, just straightforward. Over here, this is a 94 Jeep Sahara in much worse shape. This thing I patched the frame a dozen times. Uh, I have the transmission out of it right now, 
because believe it or not, the one that's in really good shape out in the garage, the synchros, which are what allow the smooth gear changes to occur, the synchros in that one are bad, and the synchros in this one were good. So the transmission and transfer case are sitting right here, and I was gonna swap them between the two because this one no longer goes on the road. I just use it for essentially rock crawling here. So it never leaves first gear. So good swap. Plus the 94 is a lot easier of a transmission to service than the 92 because they're a hydraulic clutch that has a slave cylinder that pushes in and out when you step on the clutch to release the clutch. And on a 92, that slave cylinder is inside the bell housing of the transmission. So you have to remove the transmission to get at it. 94, they're on the outside. So you can pull it off and swap it quick if it starts to leak. So it's a good swap to make. Everyone needs a big safe, right? That actually I got out of someone's basement, but thankfully it was a basement we could pull a truck into. Man, was that a project. Out front we have a couple things. That's a 48 Buick Super that has an overhead valve straight eight engine. Uh, that also has a fun hood to open. This I gave, me and my father gave this to my sister and her husband to have something to tinker on someday. But you pop that and then you can lift the hood. So you can lift the hood from either side. It's kind of a neat design. There's Sarah's war horse, the Baco. If I ever do anything wrong, that's where I'm gonna, you know, guys, come looking for me because she's gonna bury me deep in the ground. This thing I picked up from a lady up the street. I gotta clean it up here a little bit, but this is just gonna be a display piece. Maybe we'll hang it on the wall out in the garage. These are sad. It's a CB 360 and it was in really nice condition when uh, they put it away, but they put it in an area where there was a ton of moisture, so it's all locked up. I mean, the thing has 5,961 miles on it and it's shot. So it's sad, you know, garages sometimes are very moist and sticking something in a moist corner is not the answer. But we'll, we'll clean it up and it'll tell the story and live on all the same. Well, that's it for me this week. Next week, I believe I'm going to try and get out with Headless Steve. Not sure. He's not doing too well. He's pretty sick right now. So everyone wish him well, if you would. And uh, But very soon, we're going to get back into doing underwater detecting here. So brace yourselves, folks, because we're going into the depths. Till then, if you want to watch some more metal detecting, click one of the videos on the left right now, or click the subscribe button on the right to join us next week for more four-season all-terrain treasure hunting. Have a great day. Thank you.